just lastly, as we wind this up, to a young Ugandan that's out there, maybe wants to see the world, has dreams of seeing every other part of the world, but Uganda hasn't been top of the list. Why Uganda for them? And also just your parting shots. Why Uganda? Um, we have the diversity, the variety, depending on whatever your interest is. This country has something to offer for you. So if you want to be adventurous and go do bungee jumping, white water rafting, we have it. If you want to go on the boats, sail on Lake Victoria, on the Nile, you can go to you being on the Nile. You know, we have it. The uh, adrenaline junkies. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And um, if, if, if you want to... If you want to experience the the diversity of the culture we have, the foods, you know, I mean, we have it. So just, I believe it's about each and every one of us getting to understand that this country offers the diversity that we, of what each of us, you know, might want. And my advice would be for the younger people, to take time to know their country, to encourage them uh, to visit different places. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't, yeah? Um, one of my favorite places as well is Botanical Gardens in Entebbe. It's, you want peace. You just, just uh, pack your Rolex and a bottle of water, you know, your you, mat, or your, your mat, glass, so whatever exactly. You're going to sit on. Go yeah. sit in, you know, uh, in the botanical gardens. Hear the birds singing. You know, walk around the varieties of trees, and you know, peaceful environment. Mm. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be, because that's the other perception that we have as Ugandans. To travel, you have to have a car. You know, it has to be expensive. It has no, to be out of doesn't. Kampala, out of <laughs> the first yes. three districts but, out of the country. Uh, we central. can we can start with the backyard, what we have in our backyard, and as our capacity grows f economically to be able to afford, then we can get out there. Um, my biggest advice to the young people is um, is the the attitude. We need to have a positive attitude if we are going to, if we are going to grow, yeah. More especially um, for tourism, yeah. Yeah, we are we are naturally hospitable people, but if you are going to do it right in tourism, there has to be professionalism to it. Yeah. It can't just be, you know any kind of smile, it, it, you need to present yourself mm. professionally. So, yes, um, let's keep uh, a positive attitude because this country has a lot to offer to ourselves but also to the world. Um, my other advice to the young people is patience. Yeah, For us to, you know, for you and all of us to achieve what we want in life, it requires patience because these days the young people want it instant, instant, you know. Uh, really, it's, it's, uh, it's tough to just want things to happen just like, yeah. like that. Um, a bit of patience will get you to where you want to go, will get you to achieve your dream in life. And, um, and I would want to encourage more of the young people as well to... Uh, to be involved in tourism, yeah, get to know more, you know, because we have a lot of people out there who do not have uh, work to do. Mm -hmm. Graduates, you know, there's uh, we know uh, the unemployment uh, challenge we have, but I believe that tourism offers a solution to unemployment. You know, whatever little that you have in your backyard you can turn it into an asset that tourists can visit, you know, whether domestic or international. And I would like to encourage the young people to, to learn, 
you know, don't limit yourself just in the area where you are. Yes, you could have studied um, uh, business administration or whatever it is, but try and expand your knowledge, uh, you know, across the various sectors. It's it's important, and I welcome you to learn more about tourism because it's a lot of opportunity. Yes. Now, as I as I conclude, you know, on this, just to just to educate uh, our um, our viewers as well that um, tourism. There are two types of tourism. There is the leisure tourism, which has been more what we have been inclined to talking about. But yeah. there is also business tourism, uh, where we talk about you know meetings, incentives, conferences, and events. You know mm. the recent happening. Yes, nege, nege. Nege, nege falls under business tourism, which is an event. Mm. So business tourism is one kind of tourism that we still need to position ourselves as a country for. Where do we stand right now um, when it comes to the business tourism? Well, we were not doing very well until 2018 when the Ministry of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities actually intentionally mm. decided that we need to do something. And we did... Um, a strategy on how we really need to move forward. So from 2018, 2019, pre-COVID, we put in a lot of efforts uh, to try and bid for international meetings and conferences to happen here in Uganda. in Uganda. So from where we had no records in 2018 with that effort, we were ranked as the 10th best destination for mice my stands for meetings, incentives, conferences, and events we were the 10th uh, best in Africa. And then 2019, we moved up to being the sixth best destination in Africa. And that is because of the numbers of international conferences and, uh, yeah. and uh, meetings that we hosted. Yeah. Uh, of course, we got disrupted. And right now, we are really pushing very hard from that front as well, that we get to host many international events, many conferences, and many meetings. There is even more opportunity there. Mm -hmm. So in tourism, of course, most young people are looking at being guides, owning a tour company, travel agents, but you can also train and get, a, get certified mm -hmm. as a professional conference organizer. Yeah, so there are different uh, service providers in the business tourism angle as well. Mm. So lots of opportunity and also um, just to say that I really enjoy what my country has to offer when it comes to food. Yeah. Uh, my favorite foods, mm -hmm. if I may. How many are we looking at? Because <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even say food. Foods, okay, you're three. <laughs> my best... Uh, Luombo mm -hmm. um, of mushroom in in peanut sauce. So, akatiko. Okay. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yes. I love kalo. Mm -hmm. um, and I love the acholi uh, dish of the malakwang mm -hmm. with sweet potatoes. Those uh -huh. are my favorite. Okay. So if anybody hasn't tested those, they That's should. what they should also be able to have some of. If you were to also talk about juice, because we know as Ugandans, <laughs> We are really, as a country, we have really been gifted when it comes to our motherland, when it comes to soil. What's your favorite juice as well? Pineapple. Pineapple. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you so much, Lily, for taking your time out to be a part of the Ugandan podcast. What are the social media handles that people could be able to look out for when it comes to the board? Because I believe some of the information we've talked about here is also on your social media platforms. Well, um, our major... Social media platform is Explore Uganda. You'll find us. We have a TikTok accounts, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and um, and then that is more for the information, the marketing information. We have it on Explore Uganda, mm. but uh, if you on the corporate information on how you business want tourism. To business tourism, how you want to get involved in tourism. We are also, as Uganda Tourism Board, are mandated to 
license every tourism operator in this country. Please say that slowly yes. because there's a <laughs> Ugandan who has listened and I don't think you got to this part yes. because they're like, this is a business opportunity, pause and moves on. Yeah, just say that yes. once again. So for you to be operating legally a tourism enterprise in this country, you need to be registered, inspected and licensed by Uganda Tourism Board. So for your business, for you to get that guidance, whether you're going to set up an accommodation facility, whether you're setting up a tour company, a travel agency, you know, whether you're trying to uh, set up that, uh, that cultural site in your village to become one of the destination for people to visit, uh, you will require to come to Uganda Tourism Board or mm -hmm. just go to the website of Uganda Tourism Board and be, uh, you will be able to get all that information, all the corporate information are there, you know, with the email addresses and telephone, all the times we are on standby to provide the necessary support. All right. Thank you, Lily. As you have heard, if you are a tourist, if you're interested in just simply enjoying what Uganda has to offer, explore Uganda, other social media platforms. If you're particularly invested when it comes to the business angle of things, you have listened and watched the podcast and you're like, wait, I could be a business owner in Uganda from simply what nature has to have ar offer around us. That's also an option. Well, you can also be able to continue to share this with someone else who you think might be interested in the tourism within the country. The social media platforms are on the screen. Ugandan podcast has been why you visit Uganda. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Lily, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much.